bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And I want to give you some keys to identify your ministry gift. We know that the word ministry means to serve. And the Bible clearly tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13, that before Christ ascended, he descended into the lower parts of the earth and he gave gifts to man, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now, my friend, remember, we got to keep this in mind. All ministry gifts, servant gifts, because the word ministry means to serve or servant, servant of Jesus Christ. Who we are serving is Jesus. And as a result of our service to Christ, of Christ, we extend that horizontally towards man. But if you don't understand your propensity and your proclivity and how you are called to function, it could cause disturbance of the heart and the mind. So God wants us to be clear, my friend, that all Christians are called to be a witness of Christ. If you meet him, you're going to talk about him because Jesus said that his disciples and anyone that's truly born again, and we follow Jesus Christ, we fellowship with the brethren. We, we, we go to church. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourself, of, of yourselves as the matter of some. So we fellowship. And when we do choose to fellowship at a church organization or a group that confess Christ, we are to submit to that authority. We are not to go in and, and you know, make a ruckus. We submit because we're there willingly. No one forces you to go anywhere. So you submit to that authority. But what we must understand, my friend, is that in order for you to, to validate your commission and that, that, that permission given by Jesus Christ to go forth and establish a church or go into a region and plant a church, you have to be able to answer the same question that Jesus asked his disciples. Now, G Jesus was about to begin some serious confrontation with the scribes, Pharisees, and the elders, the religious law uh, uh, givers of his time. Now, now follow me very close, because we want to understand this. Before God commissioned you, you want to understand whether you're sent forth, you have to show yourself faithful to Christ. Jesus is not going to send us out into public ministry, and we don't understand the question that he asked Peter. He asked all, actually all his disciples. He asked them, he said, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Now, this is in Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13. This question must be answered properly in your life, my friend, because unfortunately, many of us, we are we have become students of men apart from Christ. See, we are to be filled with his spirit. We are to have a revelation of who he is before we begin to bend our hearts in any fellowship because you can be indoctrinated. So what is happening, people are going to church organizations without Jesus. And because they don't have that bona fide relationship and they don't really know who Jesus is, they are trapped in tradition and religion and commandments of men, teachings of men, traditions of men. Now, follow me very close because we have the same problem happening today that Jesus had in his day. The scribes, Pharisees, the elders, the Sadducees, the chief priests, they're the ones that killed Jesus. And they are still the ones today who are trying to kill Jesus, they're the ones that want you to become uh, subject to their authority. You must come under their authority or you're a rebel. You must submit to them or you're a rebel. You must come into their organization or you are a rebel. They are trying to kill Jesus as Messiah, as Lord, as King. The ideal situation, my friend, is that these ministry gifts, these servants, are, are set in the earth to help you to, to grow up and mature so that you can now begin to equip and go forth and make disciples of men. That is what we're supposed to be doing, and that should be the focus in church organization. It is to lift up the Messiah. It is to prepare you for your ministry. But 
I want to help you understand your calling. That this this question right here. Now follow me. So Jesus asked, "Who do men say that I, that I am?" He they re, uh, um, they replied. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah the prophet. Some say you're John the Baptist. <laughs> I mean, these these disciples were something. Now keep in mind, Jesus has been with these disciples for some years now because he's about to go to the cross. But Peter replied. Listen to what Peter said. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Then Jesus replied, he said, you are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from, uh, from any human being. Follow me. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it, will not prevail. And I will give you mm, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in, in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Now, follow me. This is where I'm going. After Jesus said this, he went on to say, he, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, leading priests, the teachers of religious law. They would be the ones to kill Jesus. Now, follow me very closely. My friend, unless you have had an experience with Jesus and can answer the question, who is Jesus for yourself? Because if you do not have a revelation or revealing in your heart, mind, soul, the core of your being, that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the savior of the entire world. And this is why, my friend, the teaching I just did here on the false doctrine of tithing, the teachings I've been giving you on the false teachings of church membership and spiritual coverings. My friend, until you have a revelation of who Jesus really is, you will continue to be duped, fleeced, prostituted by the same powers that were present in Jesus' day. The religious leaders are the ones that crucified our Lord. So you must have spent quiet time. You must have spent time of great diligence studying these scriptures, allowing the Holy Spirit to come alongside and teach you that God the Father opens up heaven and reveals to you that Jesus is the only way, my friend, not the law of Moses, not teachings of men, not indoctrinations of men, not being a church member, not even being baptized, my friend. You must first have a revealed knowledge of who Jesus is. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He was not talking about Peter, the person. He was talking about the revealed knowledge that God gave to Peter. That once every disciple gets this revelation of who I am, this is how I'm going to build my real ecclesia. My friend, every person that's going to church is not in the kingdom. They are not disciples of Jesus. They have never had a revelation of Jesus. They are church goers. And you must understand the text. They had already been spending significant time with Jesus, but it was Peter that, that Jesus sanctioned and said, nobody has revealed this to you, but my father, you, you are blessed. 
And the reason many people who go to church are inundated with depression, mental illnesses, their restless souls, because they have not been blessed with the real, the, the, the revelation, the revealing of Jesus. And these are the ones that try to kill people like me. These are the ones that will bash people like me. These are the ones, those are the ones who will come for us because they are not blessed because they have not had yet a revelation of Jesus. My friend, have you had a true encounter where you know that you know who Jesus Christ is? Because that is the beginning of being blessed. And let me help you understand your gift. Because it was now that Jesus was prepared to delegate to Peter to, to go to the Jewish people and begin to preach Jesus. You cannot go till he is revealed to you, my friend. You cannot because the chief priests, elders, the bishops, the false apostles, the major prophets, the chief apostles are going to stop you. They're going to stop you with all of their pet dogmas and doctrines. They're going to stop you. They're going to block you. Let me give you this. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is like fruit. Let me teach you this way. An apostle is like an orange. The apostle comes and sets up. He plants churches to teach them Jesus Christ. And an orange has its own antioxidants and things that's good and it's known for. An apostle, who a real one, who is a missionary, continues to hover over what he starts to make sure that you are getting a good source of vitamin C, the Christ. They're making sure they stay present. And you and I know you can get some orange juice at any grocery store. It's everywhere. So true messengers of Jesus who are missionaries, that's what the apostle does. They move around. They stay connected and hover over to make sure you're getting what you need. The apostle, then comes the prophet. Prophets are like the lemon. They are acidic. They have properties, lemons do, that help cleanse. They have properties that can help uh, clean the blood. And so they are more acidic to taste, but they have high potency for cleansing blood, cleansing that body. How, how many have heard of the cleanse that many people do? I forgot the name of it at this time, but it's very popular. They use cayenne pepper and what? Lemon, lemon juice. If you're trying to cleanse, so so the 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 gift of the prophet, the the orator, the messenger, the grace gift of the prophet helps to cleanse by bringing correction. There's usually a lot of rebuke in this office, my friend. They are examining co constantly, making sure that the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, making sure that false doctrine and traditions, they're coming. They're going to hewn it out. They're going to cut it down. They're going to uproot it. They're going to try their best to destroy it. <laughs> and that's what a lemon is good for in the body. It's acidic when it goes in, but it's alkaline. Once it gets in, it is highly potent and good for you. But not people, not many people like the the, the, the lemon. They like to what? Add sugar. Because <laughs> it's hard to take them, right? Just you start squinching because you get sick of the rebuke. You get tired of them saying, get right. Stop it. Stop it. You get tired of hearing that scolding of the prophet. But my friend, I tell you, if you learn to take them raw with no chaser, I guarantee your life will never be the same. So we got the apostle. You got the prophet. Now you got the evangelist. The evangelist is like the pomegranate. The pomegranate has what? Many, many seeds. And, uh, and evangelists are constantly heralding the seed of faith, heralding the seed that Jesus Christ saves, that if you repent, he will forgive you of your sin. He loves you. They're always talking Jesus, throwing those seeds constantly. Then you have the pastors. You have the pastors. Pastors are like bananas. A lot of them have that shepherd's heart. They're real smooth and sweet, but they're good for you. If you have a real good pastor, potassium is good for what? The muscle. If you cramp up and you be getting Charlie horses all the time, you need some more potassium, get you some banana. <laughs> but pastors have a great contribution, as we know, if you have a good pastor, my friend, someone who is truly looking and watching out for your soul. They're not watching over your purse and your wallet. It, they're looking after your soul. They're going to tell you the truth. They don't care about numbers. They care about your soul. And last but not least, you have the teacher. The teacher is like the Granny Smith apple. 
they have a tendency, they can be a little bit of sour, but also sweet and sour because teachers have the obligation to Christ as he sends them forth. Once they have that revelation of Jesus, you have to teach the unadulterated word of God. The, the, the real teacher that has spent time with the teacher is not going to sugarcoat, but they have a tendency to be a little bittersweet bittersweet. <laughs> I'm talking about a real teacher because they're not going to give you anything to tickle the ear. They want you to be built up in your most holy faith, equipped to go out and do your ministry every day that you live, my friend, not for Sunday church. You're not trying to be prepared and equipped for Sunday church. You are being equipped, my friend, to go into all the world, go into your world, go into your workplace, go to your doctor's office, go to your gas station, your grocery store go to your family gatherings and you stay on the post waiting looking searching like our lord who is in the midst that needs a word from the lord so my friend there you have it understanding that ministry gifts must all answer the question who is jesus who is he and even after peter answered correctly correctly and had this revelation, the revealing of, of who Christ was from our heavenly father. Our heavenly father opened this, this thing up to Peter and confirmed this is the Messiah. Unless you really catch this, my friend, God will keep you in a, in a space of training and taming and getting you to discipline your flesh, to spend quality time with him. And when we go to church, we go to fellowship. We go to sharpen one another. We go to submit one to another, to love on one another. But my friend, where you are uh, disciplined and postured to learn how all of these different fruits bend and blend. And my friend, some of these fruits, you can easily mix them together and they work together very well. When you fellowship and it's a healthy fellowship, they don't mind allowing all the fruits to be in the midst. They don't mind allowing the, the, the pomegranate to have a word. They don't mind the apostle having a word. They certainly don't mind the pastor or the teacher. Everybody has a, a role to play, but they all have different contributions. And when you do not have enough acidic uh, fruits in your life, your great fruits, your oranges, you will notice that God renders these fruits to us at different seasons. You need more acidic fruit in the winter. It helps build up your immune system. When you have more oranges and grapefruits and lime in the winter because we're closed in, we don't have as much fresh air. We tend to eat more junk food. We're inside because it's cold, it's winter, it's snowing. You sitting up eating a lot of junk food. You need a balanced diet. You need more of those acidic fruits to keep Keep that body alkaline. Keep that blood clean. Amen. God bless you, my friend. Be encouraged. Prove your ministry through this gift of evangelism. The Bible tells us clearly to do the work of an evangelist. Prove your ministry. Take your time. Wait upon the Lord. Be faithful to Christ. Be faithful to the preaching of the gospel and do the work of an evangelist. Plant seeds, plant seeds of hope, of salvation. Be a seed planter. And remember, God said, some water, some plant, but it is God who gives the increase. Not the bishop, not your pastor, not the major prophet, not the uh, uh, a senior uh, pastor, not the senior or the, the major apostle, the super apostle. No, it is God that gives the increase. I love you, my friend. God bless you.